Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good evening. I'm just going to start myself on my own. Chris from Scentland is going to come right in in a couple of moments. Hello, guys. Welcome back to uh, what are we doing tonight? Ah, yes, it's the classic Fragrance Lounge live with myself, Mr. Smelly, and my special guest, Chris from Scentland. So we're going to be talking about, we, we, we decided to mix it up tonight. We're going to do fragrances from every decade. After the war, let's say, in the 20th century, we're going to do the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. We're going to pick our favourite fragrance from each decade. Maybe we'll talk about a little bit of what went on in those decades to highlights and lowlights of those important decades. So, guys, let us know how you're doing there. We're going to bring in Chris in about two seconds. I thought I would give him a build up tonight. He was just uh, running a little tiny bit late. Let's catch up on a few comments first, so because that's always a fun thing. <laughs> Is this working? Is this thing on? Uh, that's always a fun thing to do. Max, Max Forty fan. Imagine if Max Forty comes to the stream. My life would be complete. Yes, you never know. You never know, Max. Um, Kevin Chunks. I just said, Kevin. Uh, we'll skip over that comment. We'll gloss over that one. Uh, yep. Uh, Gung Fu, one more minute, Dan, not two. Who the hell is Max? 40 says Crodini. Yoshi, Yoshi, good to see you in the uh, crowd there. And we have our good friend Kid Kentucky in the crowd too. Hello, Mr. Smelly, and all of you out there. Hello to you. Nice to have you there. Uh, we also have in the crowd tonight, Mr. Miami Cuddles. I'm not going on Smelly Stream anymore, guys. I retire. I thought we kicked you off. Sometimes we do seem to let you back on, but never mind. We'll have to live without you, Cuddles. Uh, maybe some viewers may not be too disappointed. Fellows! Uh, AC. Yeah, we need AC on one of these streams too, don't we? Hi, gang, says Andre Petre. Hi there. Great to have you here. Hi, I'm finally here live, says Sensible. Good to see you here. And uh, yeah, hello, Yoshi. Yoshi, you guys have to do 2000 sometimes. We certainly will. Let's bring in my special guest. The man of the moment. Hello, it's Chris from... Scentland, the land of scent. Great to have you here, Chris. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Fine, fine. Doing great. Oh, cool. So we've got Sorry a... for the delay. No, it's all right. Don't worry. Fine. Uh, we've got a new a new agenda tonight. We're going to do so. We thought we, we mixed it up a bit, okay? So we've got to pick a fragrance from each decade, and we, we can argue about these. We obviously pick one each from each of these decades, 50s, 60s, 70s. 80s and 90s, and uh, let's see what people think in the comments. Let's say in the comments your picks from some of these decades. Uh, go for it. And we'll see how that goes. But before we do that, how is life in general for you this week, Chris? How's things over in Budapest? Um, fairly, fairly good. Uh, work was a bit uh, a bit stressful this week. Oh. And so, um, but but it's, it's going into a good direction and uh, positive stress, right? And uh, yeah, today, uh, today is Thursday, so it was one of my uh, boxing um, days. Oh. And I got the left hook. Um, so uh, it was, <laughs> you know. Uh oh, we've lost him. I'll catch up on a couple of comments for a moment. He's frozen temporarily. Uh, Genie 404, the land of scent. Good to see you here, Genie. It's Vitor, says Signo, Signo, Signor Pavarotti. He did have a great fragrance out in the 90s. Mo Chowdhury, hello to you, Mr. Smelly. Hello, Mo. Good to have you here. Signor Visitor. Chris, we've lost you there. You've frozen up. Uh, you might be back. back. You're moving again. Okay, it's probably just a momentary thing, hopefully. Uh, Mo Chowdhury is here. For, so I'm here for my Big Mac. What does that mean? Uh, a decade, a lot of fragrances. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from. Somebody there, Carl A, is saying uh, 90s Davidoff Relax. You say you caught a, a left hook, Chris. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, oh. my, my um, defense was uh, not optimal. I got caught here. So Ouch. saw the stars for a, for a few, like in the in the cartoon. The stars all over. Oh, so. man. Do you wear a head guard when you do this? Um... Uh-oh. We've lost him again. <laughs> I think I might have my work cut out tonight. Chris, uh, hopefully you'll come back in in a minute. You, If you're having problems, you might want to go out and come back in again. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, we lost you there. You froze up. I didn't yeah. hear anything. I was just asking if you have, if you were, do you wear a head guard when you do the boxing? Um, no, not not today because we were uh, sort of practicing defense and um, didn't didn't wear. He wore one because he's the, you know, uh, the 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 coach. But I I didn't, um, and so the, I paid the price. Ouch! I think your bonkers doing this uh, 
boxing, but I mean, it keeps you lean, mean, and a fighting machine. But yeah, watch you do, do protect the old head because that's a pretty, uh, yeah, that's important. Uh, we've got a few suggestions there. 70s Lagerfeld says Crawdini, yeah, good choice. Polo Green 80s, although, well, it was released in the 70s, but it was a smell of the 80s. You could put it that way. Max 40 fan. Being a bit serious for once here. 90s Gucci Envy for men. Greg is in the crowd. Greggy Boy 76. Great to have you here. Um, and somebody said higher up uh, that Archie Luxury is in the UK. He is. Yeah, he's visiting the UK. Um, yeah, uh, Caboose Juice. Archie is in the UK. Do you have guys to plan to have guys to meet in the flesh? Uh, I haven't got a ticket to the watch show that he's here for because I kind of feel like it's not really my scene. Um, but Maybe I might try and zip in there one day if they're going out for a drink in the evening. But knowing me, um, yeah, I'll probably procrastinate and not go. Greggy Boy 76, I'll try and FaceTime you with Archie. That would be amazeballs. Hello, Chris. Hello, chat. Says time to mask up. Okay, let's 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 dive into it then, Chris. Uh, so it's not our usual format exactly, but we'll, we'll get, get some cultural references and stuff in there. It's, I'm going to leave it up to you, Chris. Do you want to go chronological on this? It seems logical. But... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's, right. uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, the war was over. Don't mention the war. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I tried once, but I got away. I think I got away with it. You know, the line from uh, 40 Towers. Love that. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> and so the 1950s, okay, uh, the 1950s, which was... An interesting uh, time in, in regards to really uh, the world was sort of you know leaving behind the 40s and going into a a uh, a time without a war, but obviously the build up to what will become the Cold War uh, mm. with the the you know the 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 East and the West um, blocks of the world sort of um, slowly gathering and uh, and and sh taking shape in any which way form and of course things like rock and roll were coming uh you know to uh to the forefront which which totally changed the uh, um the the outlay of the land and, and and people you know sort of probably were looking to enjoy life again in a more fuller way and i think that is being reflected in in the sense that obviously fragrances came to to the to the to the forefront and came to the markets and people uh, were interested mostly i think uh, still it was women's female fragrances um but there were some very um characteristic and and um classy fragrance men's fragrances appearing on the market and and my choice um is the choices that i'm going to uh, be uh, showing today is or tonight is not necessarily my favorite of of that um, particular decade but one that is very prominent and all of these are still around today so they have survived okay all of these fragrances from That's the good. from the 50s i have chosen um Mora and Wirtz, which is a german house and they have a fragrance called out uh, out uh, called tabak okay mm -hmm. yes this one has been released in 1959 okay so at the end of the decade and again the main market um was germany although at this stage it's all over um and available i think in every country and it has this wonderful little shape here and i wouldn't be scent land the land of scent uh if i would not be able to uh, present you with a real rare vintage version of this Ooh. and it looks like that that's a oh, gift yeah. box um from the early 60s but definitely this is how it looked uh in in 1959 right and yeah. um and here it says uh the duftnote internationale prägung in german obviously and it's uh, it means that the, the the scent of international appeal okay and this is how it looked like um i open this up and you have this little soap there okay mm -hmm. with this um this version of tabak probably not many people have seen this uh this is a splash um wow i've never yeah like, i've never seen the bottle like that at all yeah and uh, so you screw it off like this and and you know this typical heavy splash uh, where half a ton of juice comes out and um yeah and and it's a fragrance a scent with an international appeal 
so the fragrance is all about um, fresh aldehyde tobacco notes. Okay, um, lots of stuff in there as well, like pine and 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 her it's very herbal. Um, it's it's definitely the aldehydes and the tobacco um, creating a very um, very manly scent, very very rugged. It's not very refined around the edges uh, yet, but it has definitely a a very prominent manly appeal. Um, and again, still around today in this, this yep. shape and form here. Tabak by Moira und Wirtz. Okay, 19, Greg, Greg's saying a 1959 release, is that right? Exactly, Chris? that's right. Yeah, I mentioned right. that, 1959, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about what was kind of, it was a different world then. It's, and that's interesting. Your first choice is not exactly a designer house. It's uh, it's just more of a, it's just got a kind of an after, a different kind of thing, which I want to discuss. You quick super chat. Thank you so much. Fragrance Connoisseur with a five pound super chat. Many thanks. Great idea, guys. 50s equals Monsieur de Givenchy for me. Uh, yes, definitely a great contender from that decade, which I was tempted to pick myself. Do hit us with a super chat if you would like to ask a question. You can ask a question on unrelated things too or influence the conversation or maybe share your favorites from any particular decade. So, Chris, we didn't have designer fragrances for men up until the 1950s. I, I, I'm going to do one of the first ones ever released as far as cool. I know. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> Chanel... Yves Saint Laurent, Dior, um, G G Givenchy. These houses existed at the start of the 50s, and, but at the beginning of the decade, none of them had a, a, a men's fragrance, I don't think. So this is really the, the beginning of the whole thing, which is why we haven't gone back to the 40s. So the whole concept of designer fragrances hadn't really come about, hence why your one is, I mean, it's a, a, a brand, but it's not exactly a fashion house kind of thing. So That's right. Um, you and know, it's, it's the Germans, you know, German fragrance. Like, how does it smell? You know? Uh, a German fragrance, um, you know, not the best memories of the Germans at the time, still lingering around. Okay, but uh, but obviously it was a different different country by then in many many uh, means. And you mentioned Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Karl Lagerfeld. These 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 characters came up around the mid fifties, um, winning some some competition then and, and making their mark into into uh, great fashion houses at late at a later stage. So. Yeah, I think in, in Britain, things imported from Germany were still rather than saying made in Germany, often just said foreign because it wow. was so unpopular. Uh, that if it said, Yeah, I think watches and stuff made in Germany, you, you find them from that era, and it just says foreign because uh, it's better to say that than German. So, yeah, it was uh, a, a very uh, different time, and yeah, very, very austere time for Britain, which was still ca catching up after the, the war and all that. And let's go into my first pick, though. So, I, I think mine, um, because you, you've given me a hint of what you've picked, mine are going to be, um, as usual, a little bit more obvious, but I am covering some of the, the unmissable ones. So, I, after much deliberation, I am going for from the 50s, my favorite Chanel's Port Monsieur, the first fragrance for men from the house of Chanel. I believe also the only one released during the lifetime of uh, Coco Chanel herself. And a 1955 release. So uh, really, really one of the first designer house men's fragrances. Uh, at that time, Dior didn't have one. Did Yves Saint Laurent even exist? Probably not, no. Um, Givenchy just about may have existed, did exist, but no. Anyway, so Chanel Paul Monsieur, a fantastic sort of citrusy leaning uh, Chypre scent, and it was Guy Robert, the perfumer. Um, it's it's an obvious choice, but it had to be picked. So Chanel Pomachot is still exceedingly wearable today. Great yep. video, actually, if you want to check it out by uh, a guy called Super Decob. If you if you type type Super Decob, Chanel Pomachot, he is a real Chanel fanboy. And he has made a great video way, way back before even I had started my channel. And that means it's a long time ago. And he did a great video on different iterations of it and how much he loves it. And so a really, really pleasant, gentlemanly, refined kind of scent. It is a green, bitter, citrusy, oak moss in the base, bit of lavender in the mid. Some people call it barbershop, but um, I think it's, yeah, I don't know, a little bit more posh than a barbershop type of smell to me. Very, very refined, very elegant. It's kind of spicy. Uh, some note listings now have ginger. There's a hard to pin down sort of subtle spiciness about this one. Very, very wearable. Very slight in projection and longevity. In I've had a few versions over the years and none of them were strong. But I don't care. It's just one of those classic gentlemanly type fragrances. A real yeah, go-to for me. 
very classic French perfumery and a masterpiece. So this was a titan of the industry. Chanel has had to change the formula, of course, but I find they don't usually screw things up much. I still feel happy <laughs> with the uh, the versions you can get. Uh, time to musk up says, unfortunately, they've removed it from the USA, Canada. Uh, Canada and the UK still smells it. I did not know that. I know there was a long time when you couldn't get this in the USA and there was something called Chanel Pour Monsieur Concentré or something. Yeah which was a slightly different phrase. I don't know why you couldn't get this one over there. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think it was available back in the USA again a bit recently, but maybe not still. I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, if you can at all get it, I think it's really nice. I know there's an eau de parfum, different kind of thing, which you may also enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but this to me is the classic eau de toilette. So, and this was the middle of the 50s. So I've tried to pick ones in my selections, actually, that are sort of the beginning half of the decade. So we can say it was being worn in that decade. Yeah. That's what I've gone for. So that's my choice. Back to you, Chris. Let's do something about, like, favourite music and or film or something like that from the 50s. So if I had to put you on the spot for your favourite musical artist of the 50s, who would you go uh, with? It has to be Elvis Presley. Um, and and the way he he appeared and um, yeah I'm an Elvis fan since 1980 or something and uh, Elvis really shaped uh, you know the, the the second half of the of the decade in appearing in '54 then doing the Louisiana Hayride in '55 then you know the Ed Sullivan show Steve Allen show in 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 the US and uh, you know then doing movies Love Me Tender uh, J House Rock and all that it was very big then going into the army co coming over to Germany actually at the time so uh, very very prominent uh, uh, figure but lots of lots of um, you know rock and roll like Little Richard Buddy Holly um, there, there was there was there was great blues music uh, great jazz yep. out there so um, I think you know the 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 fifties really broke in you know, into and gave the world a new direction of how to look at um, the, the you know, the non-classical non music because there was jazz before and, and that, but, the, you know, Bill Haley as well. And they, they really were transitioning into more a sexy and, and a sex appeal kind of direction. You know, and Elvis, I think, above all, uh, really embodied that. He was banned, wasn't he, from numerous radio stations yeah. and TV yeah, shows? Yeah, yeah, because uh, he was he was he was the white white guy with a black voice. So they smashed his uh, his records uh, on 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 radio shows. They couldn't film him waist down, you know, uh, and all these these things because it was too too much and uh, yeah. from several aspects uh, for the authorities of the time. That tells you, you know how much the world has changed since then. Yeah, so there was a thing that he, he, he they, the the white radio stations didn't want to play him because he sounded like a black artist, and exactly. also there was the the sexy thing that what is you know incredibly tame to us that he wiggled his hips a bit <laughs> was supposedly so raunchy and sexual that it, it couldn't be shown. So a di very different world. It's it's easy to glamorize it and say you know oh there's all there are some great films and the way the men and the women dressed is it looks kind of great in the films and stuff. And you know the Americans had these fantastic big cars and the Cadillacs and all this kind of thing. And you watch Happy Days and you think it's some idyllic era. Uh, but certainly in the UK, I, I think if you actually were forced to go back, then you'd find life very, very humdrum. The entertainment and stuff that we have at our fingertips, you know, most people didn't have a TV. There wasn't yeah, an awful exactly, lot of it. It was right. quite grey time. So, um, you know, we obviously we see some of the best S aspects of it with Frank Sinatra films and all, all this kind of stuff. But uh, probably for the average person, I, I tell you, you might not like it if I, if we sent you back in time to the fifties. Uh, but yeah, d different days, different days. Okay, so we've been, uh, oh, my artist, I'm going to go with. I really liked Dion and the Belmonts. So I like that kind of doo wop wow. style. Uh, I always found that quite Im impressive, wow. and um, yeah, something very wow. romantic about that old era. And, and I guess and movie. So got the, uh, ooh, someone's pulled up a good one there. Yoshi Yoshi, a streetcar named Desire, 1951. I didn't know it was wow. that, that far back into the decade. Uh, give me a moment to think. I'll go to you for a movie first, Chris. I would pick, um, there's several very memorable movies. Uh, uh, one of them, an Italian movie called Ladri di Bicicletta. Uh, but my favorite one has to be, and I think it was the 55 um, Roman Vacation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's from right. 1955. With Audrey Hepburn and um, Gregory Peck, I think. Um, yeah. 
like it's so such a charming beautiful you know black and white yes. um movie that I, I it's a joy to watch um and uh, Wait, what's the name of it again because it's not may not be familiar um, to many roman people. vacation roman vacation yeah okay. ozzy hepburn and gregory peck i think uh, i always mix up carrie grant and, and gregory peck so but i think it was gregory peck Right. But just if you if you help me out there, uh, I appreciate it. But I think it was 1955. I was one like, wow, so that's an old movie because it's it still really has this um, great. It's so charming. I mean, Audrey Hepburn, uh, absolutely charming, and Audrey Hepburn became became one of the favorite celebrities of Hubert de Givenchy, um, who used to dress her, you know, in the in the 50s and 60s. So you mentioned Givenchy, definitely. Uh, Hubert, Hubert de Givenchy was one of the leading figures at the at the fashion um, industry. Obviously, I think Christian Dior himself was gone at the time when Hubert yeah. Givenchy was, you know, coming up. But um, yeah, did you find the Roman vacation? Uh, Roman vacation. Somebody said the year is 1953. Okay. I will check the uh, acting cast there for you. Uh, 1953 movie. Let's see what yeah. they say here. 53. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, so this is Gregory Peck. Peck uh, yeah. Gregory Peck, Audrey Hepburn, and uh, somebody called Eddie Albert, who I can't say I'm familiar with, but uh, yeah, okay, one to check out. I will go for my movie. I'm going to go. There's some great suggestions there. Someone says, Some Like It Hot, of course. The amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my That's... goodness. Uh, Tony Curtis and, and what, uh, Jack Lemon, right? That was the... Tony Curtis and Jack Lemon, alongside, of course, Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. So that exactly. is a... Marilyn Monroe. What a person, a personality of, of, of the time. Yeah, wow. Yeah, she emerged uh, as one of the, the heart, well, is a heart throb or sex symbols, let's say, of the decade. Uh, what were you? Was, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to check what year Casablanca was. No, that's 1942. That's completely yeah. wrong. Sorry. Okay. I was talking, I'm thinking of epics. I'm going to go with Ben Hur. It was an era of the historic <laughs> epic film. There were these three or four hour films, weren't they, that were so yeah, yeah, uh, incredible, yeah. kind of set in biblical times or the Roman Empire type stuff. And you know, this there was no CGI back then, and there were huge battle scenes where they they literally just had to hire loads of you know extras and all that kind of stuff. So it was all done. You know, things that they now do with with computer graphics were all had to be done the old-fashioned way. Amazing, really long films, uh, historical epic, epics were a big thing. A great example then would be Ben Hur. There are numerous other ones which I find quite good, going in from the late fifties into the early sixties. Um, you know, and then it culminating in things like Cleopatra in the early 60s yeah. is another great one. And and it was the era of that kind of stuff. So uh, exciting times in a way. But yeah, I bet if you went back then, tight life was a little bit humdrum. Uh, ten, ten Mandaments. I think you mean Ten Commandments. But yeah, I think that's an example of another one of those great uh, historic epic film, films. With all, they had all these chariot races and all this stuff going on it was great stuff okay so the 50s fantastic we both picked a good fragrance i mean there ain't a lot of other choices are they we, we it's, it's a tough uh you know there yes, are yeah, hundreds, yeah. Actually, um, i think uh the uh, givenchy monsieur de givenchy came out in 59 or something right it did indeed and that was i almost went for that but i had to sort of give it to the more titanically important one i really do think monsieur if you can get a vintage uh of monsieur de givenchy is also very, very exquisite. Lost something a little bit in the Parfums Mythique reissue, but that's still, I, I still enjoy wearing mine of, of mm. that too. But I won't go for, we, let's not mess around with too many honorable mentions. Let's move on then into, let's say, a little bit more of a, a decade where there's a little bit more, more choice and a hell of a lot more cultural diversity begins oh, yeah. to come in for sure. So the 1960s, uh, over yeah. to you, Chris, for your next fragrance selection, please. 1960s, I, I'm going for a fragrance. Again, not a, necessarily an obvious choice, okay? Um, because I think there's, there's two major releases. One is obviously Aramis, and the other one you maybe will be introducing. So I I, um, I leave that to you. I'm sure you will pick that one. Um, so I, I went, again, for a less obvious choice in order to keep it a bit more versatile and, and uh, interesting as well. Yep. Uh, Capucci pour homme. Ah, That's yes. That's the bottle. Capucci pour homme, um, wonderful fragrance, straightforward, Italian, obviously, Roberto Capucci being the the brand or the designer um, yep. behind this, came out in um, 1967, 
Okay, um, so well around the time when when another very famous uh, fragrance that you're gonna be introducing probably <laughs> if not then I, I just you know missed the target. Um, you know me too it, well. Yes. Yes, yes. I know. I can see. I can see in my mind the bottle already. And um, this one is a is a um, fairly st simply structured, easygoing, um, bit sour sort of. Uh, sour. Yes, that's a good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has this um, this great um, fresh, spicy aldehydic sourness about it, which very I love. Dry, some, some very it dry, just, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. It's, some call it pissy sometimes, but it's not to that extent like we have like mm. um, the original Ubo Boss, for example. But it has this fresh citrus. I think Amalfi citrus here, Amalfi lemon, I should say, um, that is just shining through. Makes it very Italian, very easygoing. And aldehydes definitely in here, um, and this this bit of a, of this piney mossy um, dry down bit of woodiness in there as well. Um, I, I don't know. This is not a vintage bottle or yeah. or vintage deodorant here. How much it has changed, but mm. it really smells close to you know what, um, Moustache by Rochas, uh, the the original 1949 Moustache. Uh, that's right. where it's it's it has this. It has this um, sort of bitter or sour. I don't know which one really. Um, yeah, maybe bitter, bitter and sour. Maybe bitter. Very, yeah. yeah, very, very dry, very arid, but very yeah. gentlemanly, very good. I like you. I've got it. It's very affordable, uh, but I yeah. don't know how much the formula changed, but I still find it very interesting in the modern version. Definitely a very nice old school smell. I'll just quickly do the super chat there. Somebody called Double Question Mark. Thank you for the 100 Mexican Peso super chat. Yeah. 60s. Lacoste Jean Patou. Yes, there was a Jean Patou. Yeah. Lacoste collaboration fragrance wasn't there in the 60s. I'm, I haven't smelled it, but yeah, nice suggestion. Thank you. It for was, the yes. Super chat. Yeah. Uh, no, great choice with the Capucci. You know, uh, I really, I, there's a nice little article somebody wrote a few years back about how it's their sort of favorite fragrance on, online when, when blogging was a bigger thing than YouTube. And um, yeah, always a, a, a really interesting one that I'd heard about for a few years. I heard about it from Lanier Smith and was glad to pick it up wow. a few years ago. Uh, what lovely a stuff. That guy is. Yes, we need to get him back. Yeah, we need to get him back on on these live shows. Actually, um, yeah, I'm going to get. Oh, let me let me hit up Lani and we'll get him on a show. Either either this one or the Friday or Saturday ones. Guys, don't forget, we're live every Friday and Saturday here too at 10:30 p.m. UK time. That's 5:30 p.m. in New York City. Okay, few people are saying Habit Rouge. I nearly went for Habit Rouge, but it would have been uh, would have been a little disingenuous. It is a great fragrance. That was 60. Five or 66 absolute masterpiece from galan but i'm not going to cheat i'm going to be chris is right he knows me too well it has to be dior's <laughs> old sauvage okay so i mean you know this is a titanic fragrance house fashion house very important house and this release is, is, is just absolutely amazing still stands up wonderfully today i'm very fortunate to have the vintage formula and i do think if you can get that it is really worth seeking out for some reason all the vintages that i've bought have held up very well which surprises me pleasantly because it, it's quite a citrus heavy fragrance. So I would have yeah. uh, expected some problems, but I don't have them. Uh, and just a wonderful uh, citrus aromatic fragrance, Edmund Runitska, the perfumer. Uh, he utilized, I think, one of the first fragrances, if not the first, to use the note of Hedione, which is a compound, some sort of similarity or derived from jasmine or something. Apparently, it's had a, it's been proven to affect the part of the female brain responsible for sexual attraction. Apparently, that's, you know, <laughs> chemically being proven that hasn't worked for me i'm afraid but uh yeah we, we live in hope the bottle design i think is absolutely charming and classic yeah. just brilliant yes. that's it's just just simple but very very classy uh wonderful old adverts from the old days with these kind of lovely um french art style drawings of, of yeah. young men yeah. with ladies draped on their shoulders or whatever very simple kind of message if you wear this people will find you attractive and indeed uh, is it Steve McQueen? I think it was his signature scent, and um, he, he said, said it was. It what really a guy! I love Steve McQueen. Oh my god! Uh. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe he's going to feature in our discussion of, of movies of the the yeah, decade. Sure. Uh, so yeah, wonderful burger, wonderful fresh opening, kind of nice, a bit, a bit of floral, bit of um, I think weird, weirdly, Luca Turin said it, it, some kind of Vietnamese salad accord was included, which is his own little weird imagination. But it does have these kind of um, some of your. It does remind you of some of the herbs you might have dried in your in your kitchen cabinet, your rosemary or your yeah. whatever your your thyme and all this kind of stuff. Very very beautiful, very well balanced, nice white musky undertone, 
really, really love wearing this. And, you know, nothing dated about this one. Still gentlemanly, but a little bit, something a little bit more sexy about this one, maybe, than the yeah. tiny bit stuffy Chanel Paul Monsieur type stuff. So, oh, Sauvage, get the modern if you have to, get the old one if you can. 1966, that one. So, uh, and, and let, well, let's talk about the world. So, I mean, going into the early 60s, we still had a slightly more conservative world. And yeah, people were yeah. still kind of things like Elvis Presley or, you know, guys in, in suits still playing their guitars and, uh, you know, a little Cliff Richard or whatever in the UK, which is all, you know, we're all going on a summer holiday, that film, you know. Uh, okay, but not quite as racy as, as things got by the the yeah. mid 60s so you had the, the the big two people i guess is the the beatles and the rolling stones came out uh which who would you prefer out of the two chris beatles versus the stones a few years ago i would have said the stones now i'm saying uh the beatles because i'm i, I really got to know a little bit more about uh especially paul mccartney and who I think is an absolutely, uh, I always wondered that well, I didn't like him for some reason, but I just realized what a great man that is, or he is. So uh, yeah, I would go for, for, for the Beatles, definitely. All right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, music wise, then what are your thoughts on that? I mean, everything, if there's a most important decade ever in popular music, yeah. that probably is it, isn't it? So we can't really cover the whole thing in this in this would, video. But yeah, where, how do we touch on that? <coughs> I would have loved to, uh, to live uh, in, in in the sixties actually, because it was a very stylish, um, very genuine, probably um, decade in terms of music and and, and art uh, and uh, and you know everybody was trying to bring something colorful, something new to to the decade, no matter where they sort of operated. Again, music, poetry, books, lots of lots of stuff that can be mentioned. Uh, music wise, um, yeah, well, I mean, we mentioned we mentioned the, the big ones uh, there. Um, one of my favorite bands, Genesis, was uh, founded in 67, Rutherford, Gabriel, Hackett. Oh, um, ah, I didn't know Angst. that. I thought, oh, okay, I didn't know they went yeah. back that far high school buddies and they just got together and, uh, and and formed that band for example um elvis had a great comeback special in in 68 everybody Famous, remembers the, the yep. black dress uh, stuff yep. and it was hot like hot, hot like fire i think and politically you know you, it was difficult uh the, the, the 60s beginning of the 60s uh, you know kennedy came um and then the, there was um um the conflict with, with cuba or uh, cuba where almost the second or the third sorry the third world war almost erupted there with the you yes. had Rushchev who was the uh who was beating the in in the in the in, the, in new york in the um building of of nato it was uh, he was uh hitting the the where he was making the speech, hitting it with his shoe, and you know all these very uh, memorable moments. And of course, um, that was the Cuban Missile Crisis, 1962, yeah, when yeah. We, we came apparently within a whisker of nuclear war. Thank yeah. goodness that would never happen again. Oh dear, whoops. Um, but yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah, no. Moving swiftly on, yeah, that was a very close. I mean, people were really, you know, it, it was touch and go, guys. It really could have gone either way. And uh, but yeah. luckily they they negotiated a, a thing that, that sorted it out. Of course, Kennedy's murder was one of yeah. those things that anyone who was alive remembers exactly where they were when it happened. Um, Martin Luther was, King as uh, murder Martin, as well. Yeah, 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 the civil rights movement. So by the end of the decade, things had moved on, and the, yeah, the, 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 we'd had the civil rights movement in America, sort of um, Vietnam even, even, started. Uh, yeah, Vietnam was the big thing that was there were huge protests in mainly in America but in other places too uh it was really a, a very exciting not always in a good way kind of time lots of protests going on we have this the Paris Spring of course in 68 in in France so some kind of um, rebellion there against the establishment and the de Gaulle government we had the Czechoslovak invasion by the Soviets in yeah. 68 to crush the Dubček sort of a liberal version of socialism or communism yeah. which the, the soviets they couldn't tolerate that because it was they felt that they, it, they it couldn't lose control it almost so, copy yeah. paste of the 1956 uh, revolution in hungary so it was that you know at the time some nations were standing up against the uh, the russian uh, um occupation of their territory put it that way mildly but that's what history uh, was was all about at the time right yes and just Sharon, 
Sharon Tate murders by uh, what was his uh, Charlie Manson. You know, they just, uh, that was it was a wicked time, I tell you. You know, it was. was uh, it was all going on, yeah, and and of course, you know, it, the, yeah. People say if you remember the '60s, you weren't there because everyone, well, probably not everyone, but uh, yeah, it became much more normal for people to take drugs. So we better t- we had hippies and you know marijuana and LSD and hallucinogenic drug drugs became uh, popular among young people. Do do you know if your parents ever did any of that, Chris? Or no, I don't think so. My parents were, uh, um, it was the best they could for, the, for them. They were traveling the world, Paris, Manchester, and, and Baghdad in Iraq. They were, so they were wow. everywhere. They Did lived they? a nice life, but they didn't touch drugs. Um, no. All right, good for them. No, my parents were squares too. They, 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 uh, they didn't do any drugs, so uh, just not everyone was on it. But, yeah, that was – okay, so we can't really cover the whole 60s. There are a couple of great recommendations. Films there, Gung Fu yeah. says Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Yeah. I mean, that's a – let's do films quick. I, I, I'll concur with him that I do love the Spaghetti Westerns. Do you know why they were called Spaghetti Westerns, Chris? Uh, because they're mostly uh, Italian uh, Italian directors and, and, and also Italian music, like uh, – uh, I think names come in uh, Ennio Morricone, Sergio Corleone, I think Sergio. Yeah, yes. correct and me I, if I'm wrong. I, I think, uh, yeah, I, exactly so. Yeah, uh, and were they even some of them filmed in U- Europe or Italy too? Because it looked a bit like it, it, I, I think uh, definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Yes, 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 definitely. So uh, they weren't necessarily filmed in the Wild West, and yeah, a lot of Italians no. involved. So uh, yeah, they're, they're good, the bad, and the ugly. Just one of many absolutely amazing ones with the great Clint Eastwood and the fantastic theme tune. Uh, best yeah, film ever I made. Midnight Cowboy. I'm walking here. Uh, Midnight Cowboy with Dustin Hoffman. Hoff- Dustin Hoffman and. Uh, Voigt, John Voigt, wasn't it? John Voigt, yeah. The yeah. dad of Angelina Jolie. Right? Jolie, yeah, 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 yeah. Although they're not in good terms, I heard, so. Oh, uh, shit, really? Okay, yeah. Rip so, rap so the, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We mentioned Steve McQueen and obviously Bullet. Uh, with this, yes. for the first real car chase uh, was introduced to, to moviegoers uh, with Steve McQueen uh, driving his, uh, his, his famous Ford Mustang in that 1968 movie called bullet when he was frank bullet i think love like we oh, watched yeah. that with my four-year-old son believe it or not wow what did he make of it he loves the car chase uh thing it's just incredible in san francisco you know like uh, it's it's very very uh <laughs> so well done uh yeah amazing Check out that one, guys. Uh, bullet car for chase scene. Look it up next time you're on your Netflix. The Graduate, 1967. Oh, yeah. Amazing awesome. film. Yeah. Amazing Simon and Garfunkel soundtrack. And Dust- again, Dustin Hoffman starring in that one. A tale of a, a young boy seduced by, uh, I guess we could call her a MILF before we had MILFs as a word, if I can <laughs> say that. Um, but yeah. 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 Oh, easy Rider. Easy. Yeah, God, we could be here a long time. This, I mean, it just Sergio goes to Leone. show. Yeah, uh, Sergio Leone, Manly Sense, hello, good to see you in the comments. Sergio Corbucci and Sergio Solima. Yeah, an explosive decade. It really, really was. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, indeed, says Tomb Fath Music. Uh, that was indeed a 60s film, and, and that was, yeah, when 2001 seemed a very futuristic <laughs> prospect. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, my mum actually designed some of the con- uh, costumes for that film because she worked for Hardy Amy's at wow. the time, so um, that was an, a, an interesting fact. That is cool. guys. Yes, I, I often think she should have continued her instead of giving up her fashion career to start a family in 1977 and have me. I I, I kind of feel she should have <laughs> carried on. I, I always feel kind of bad about it. Uh, but uh, there you go. Uh, social convention got the better of her. And she she decided she have, had to have kids by the time she got to 32. Uh, but yeah, yeah, she used to work as a fashion designer in the late 60s. So uh, fun stuff. And yep, yeah, but uh, uh, one last great suggestion there: Mega Ren, Butch Cassidy, and the Sundance yeah. Kid. That is quite good, isn't it? Raindrops keep falling on my head. It's that that scene on the bicycle, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, good film, yeah. Okay, guys, that's the sixties. We'll be here. On, we could do a whole episode on the sixties, and in fact, <laughs> exactly, we, yeah. we may all work, we, we may also do, do yeah. that because there's, we, we, I mean, we've both got a few other fragrances in mind, but I think we've covered enough on on that decade. All right, then, um, keep keep coming with the suggestions, guys. Uh, if 
you want me to highlight them, a super chat would guarantee that. But I'm still looking out for what other people are saying. Uh, yeah, Taffy agreeing on 2001 Space Odyssey. It is a good film. OK, Chris. Well, guess what? After the 60s, it had to be the 1970s. So what is your fragrance selection? Uh, again, a less obvious choice because I could have gone for for my favorite uh, Lagerfeld Cologne or Lagerfeld Classic or or Gainsborough or Paco Rabanne pour Homme or <laughs> so many fragrances. Uh, but I, I'm going for something that is um, again still around today and uh, came out in 1976 uh, in Italy to keep it a bit geographically versatile. Okay, and it's denim. Per l'uomo che non deve chiedere mai, for the man who never has to ask, okay? Um, <laughs> you couldn't say that now, could you? <laughs> In an advert. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's not politically correct, right? No. Carry on. And so this is a wonderful um, leathery, chipre um, masterpiece. Yeah, I'll, that I'll is... just grab my bottle, actually, while you, so I can experience along with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, that came out at the time as an aftershave, um, and uh, again, it was 1976. It's it's an Italian um, Italian brand, and um, this came out as an aftershave, and 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 it had this very prominent ad where you had this guy in his denim sort of shirt, and the woman from behind with with her with her hand red nails was unbuttoning one button after the other and then she was going down and the guy just kept on doing like this and it was all about seduction and and but this really really embodies something of the 70s and the 80s actually uh, mm. i think that is the, the the aroma the blend that was created here is so so good and the performance is absolutely even for the for the aftershave is absolutely outstanding now there is an other toilet version to this as well, which today comes in a the same shape bottle, but fully black. Okay, and I had this one supposed to be the button, you know, that I mentioned that is getting unbuttoned here. This all oh, right. That that is yeah. that is the reason it looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, today's other toilet version uh, um, is is an absolute wonderful, wonderful uh, um, performing best quality versus price ratio fragrance out there so um denim is definitely a choice for me pure rugged manly um tough guy 70s you know when every everything was too much you know like hairy chest and 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 burt reynolds you know undressing himself in some 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 weird uh magazine and all that was just over the top the you know elvis with his uh his uh, bloody um uh the, the, the suits that he had on uh the jumpsuits and all that uh it was crazy indeed it was a, the decade that taste forgot they sometimes call it and um yeah i well i kind of love it but i don't know um Gu mo chowdhury good point there gucci Purim 1976 version is is really nice i'm lucky to have the aftershave splash of that and it is an exquisite sheep um yeah okay no yeah 1970s uh we'll come to some of the movies and stuff people discussing some of those uh gung fu with a great list of bruce lee ones including uh, way of the dragon and game of death thank you gung fu yeah bruce lee, uh, we'll yeah. go yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that whole kind of, that style of movie came out then. And let's uh, go to the super chat. Many thank yous to Taffy J for the $10 super chat. Really enjoying this stream. Great topic and discussion. Thank you. We like to think we do something unique with this show. And uh, yeah, so glad that the, the, this this ch slightly different theme this week, proving popular. Thank you, Taffy J. Okay, great selection, Chris. Very happy to have that one in my collection. Uh, do you have the the odor toilet as well? I've just got the very affordable aftershave. It, yeah, if if you if you bear with me for ten seconds, I'm going to show you how that looks like. That would be fabulous. Okay. Meantime, uh, we will go to my pick. So, guys, for the 1970s, yeah, def I mean, I've got some really good picks, but I don't want to cheat and do a load of honourable mentions. Some really nice stuff. Chris has mentioned, you know, Pacar Ban Prom. I'm a, I am a big fan, and I, a lot of people are not so sure about Polo Green from 78, but I think it is a masterpiece and a very titanic fragrance. Van Cleef and Arpels 1978, says Yoshi, but I, I've gone for one which, which I did put in a video earlier this week. 
Uh, and I think it's more unique than some of the others, but I'm I'm not hell bent on saying this has to be the best, but I, I, I've, I've gone with it. And this is Givenchy Gentleman 1974. Okay. Uh, Guy Leger, the perfumer, the second fragrance release from the house of Givenchy. I love the design. Beautiful. There's a 70s vibe about the box there, which it doesn't yeah. come in this box anymore. Wallpaper used to look like that, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's your wallpaper in the 70s. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. God, you would have this kind of wallpaper and some kind of dark brown pattern on your <laughs> carpet. And oh, man, it was it was oppressive. It was, yeah. <laughs> uh, and even the crockery and stuff was weird back then. It was it was really a wacky time. Anyhow, I've gone for that fragrance. It's an amazing woody aromatic scent. Russian leather, wow. civet, musk. Patchouli, it is heavy patchouli, on the patchouli, patchouli yeah. uh, a very distinctive note that you can pick out in a fragrance when it's prominent. Uh, it's got this kind of uh, a bit of a honey thing in there, a little bit of a funny sweetness in there. And again, off, I think honey is viewed as becoming a little, or can come off. I hate to use this term because I don't really think it's right, but pissy or let's say a little animalic even mm -hmm. uh, in, in honey. I guess it makes sense. comes out of bees, nether regions. Anyhow, it's a real, real complex, rich, masculine, seductive again very french smelling as, as you mentioned french smelling which yeah th this is real deep rich french smelling but very 70s sort of bang in your face type of fragrance it was my dad's fragrance too that my mum bought from in wow. the 70s so it's my first I think experience my dad had it as well yeah very very rich very good i think it's been kind of messed up a little bit by but reformulations some people can tolerate the modern reformulation many can't and are disappointed by it great bottle design absolute classic masculine sort of powerhouse but but different to anything else out there um denim also i thought was a great yeah here's thing. the other toilet uh oh okay this is how it looks yeah. like today so um, nice and you say so if you have the aftershave already or if you just want to get whichever one's strongest you think it could be spending the little bit extra for the the Basically, spray the toilet almost yeah. almost nothing and this one is i would get this one uh it's it's perfect yeah. it's just absolutely yeah. perfect maybe i need it okay uh Great decade, uh, loads of great fragrances too. Uh, but we'll we'll do another video on the some of these year. We'll do we'll keep doing some of these individual years. So YSL pour I did like from the beginning of this the decade. But uh, let's do films because that's always a fun subject. So a couple of suggestions from the crowd there. Tomb of Fath music Jaws, yeah, yep. terrifying film. Yeah, put me off swimming for life when I saw that one. Even if I went swimming in Devon, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to go above my knees because I'd seen this film. And I was like, they were like, my mum and dad were like, well, no, we don't get sharks in, in England that would bite people. But I was <laughs> like, well, how do you know? Like, there's no border. There's no fence. One could have, like, strayed a little bit. There's nothing to guarantee there couldn't be one. So I, I, I was, yeah, it definitely affected me, that film. Uh, on a lighter note, Greece, yeah. not a fan. If my friend Sean is watching, we yeah. often say it drives me around a bend, the music in that one. Yeah. Um, I think I had a thing. If I watched a movie on TV as a young kid, so something like that might have looked quite interesting. If it came on the TV, I thought, oh, this looks all right. I might watch it. And then when they suddenly burst into song, which I didn't know they were going to yeah. do, I was like, oh, no, it's one of those. So yeah. that was my little prejudice. No. What about you, movies from the 70s, Chris? Well, Jaws, obviously, and Jaws is, is something that started something that um, was appearing on the movie scene, uh, um, in that culture um, from that year onward, 75 onward, was uh, the, the summer blockbusters, you know, um, oh, yeah. uh, because that was, that was the sting and Godfather before that, but Jaws really started that, uh, and then each year brought something like Star Wars, for example, or wow, uh, yes, Close so. Encounters of the Third Kind, and you know, obviously Spielberg appealing, and one of my favorite movies of the 70s has to be his, one of his very early uh, works called Duel, Yes, yeah, someone's um, mentioned that in a comment there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jewel, Jewel is just um, uh, uh, an absolutely. Is that with the, the 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 truck, the lorry chasing the guy? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the guy's name escapes me for for. Um, uh, but I'm gonna have it on very uh, soon. Dennis Terr Weaver. Dennis De Weaver uh, in that movie. <laughs> Dennis Weaver, terrifying suspense film. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful movie, beautiful taxi driver. Wow, you have to rocky, you know, obviously. Yeah, 
God, we could wow. be here all night with the films. Yeah, Taxi Driver, brilliant film with Robert De Niro and a young uh, Sybil Shepherd and a young, the other, jo- is it Joe, oh, what's the actress's name? Uh, the one who was in Silence of the Lambs. Um, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, yeah. Thank you. That is a great film. That is an amazing movie. Uh, you look at uh, great lines from, you're looking at me, you're looking at me, all, all those. Oh, yeah. No, you talk, you're talking to me, you're talking to me. Yeah, all, you're all talking these to me. You're talking to me. Uh, yes, indeed. Guys, let us know your favourites from that decade. We've got a great uh, super chat here from Gung Fu. Thank you so much for the uh, Norwegian Crowns, 20 Norwegian Crowns super chat. Many thanks for that. Great question, actually. This is a crucial question, and I'm not sure of this, this the easy answer. How does vintage fragrances age? Some good, stroke bad. <laughs> yes, would be my answer. Chris, what do you say to that? Uh, definitely, and and uh, some good, some bad, some indifferent. But yeah. but uh, you really well. It depends a lot of things. First of all, the quality of of the fragrance is very important. Like you know, what sort of quality was the fragrance originally uh, created of? Okay, and then how was it stored? Um, how well it was kept? Um, how much out of sp- sunlight and, and 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 warmth and if it was kept in a cellar like for example i have a uh, a walter wolf fragrance which was a um i think swiss canadian uh businessman who ventured into formula one and in around 70 80 and he brought out a fragrance line and that fragrance was stored um somewhere in a in a warehouse that was closed off for decades in sweden and i got a bottle and it smells it is absolutely beautiful that there's not a fingerprint on the bottle and it's like stunning so it survived even though it wasn't the most expensive fragrance obviously at the time but um you see also many fragrances get brown and they get they get oily um and so it really depends on on how it, how it was stored and how well it was kept and and yeah. uh, but you have what you've mentioned the more the citrus fragrances tend to go just off the, there is this distinct smell when you smell it um when you when you immediately know that this is not this something's wrong yeah there's a certain kind of citrus aroma chemical or something or maybe it's a natural oil that that has a certain okay i remember claire from the smurfy girly channel always used to say it's sort of smart a bit like celery or something but there, mm. there is a certain thing that you get sometimes uh and then again on the other hand i've, I've got some fragrances that there's a sort of similar thing that's happened and it doesn't smell necessarily bad, but I, mm-hmm. I kind of like it. But I, it, I'm pretty sure it's a, a, a result of age and something's changed if I'd opened, like my Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis and my Paco Rabanne Pour Homme from the 80s both have it. I kind of like it, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have smelt this way had I opened it brand new then. Yeah. So some maybe, some people could say that's aging like a fine wine, <laughs> but it is, it wasn't meant to be still with somebody like me 30 years later. So it's a sort of deterioration that's maybe okay that you might like. And then there are some, like you say, Chris, that you, you I'm pretty sure it must be exactly how they hoped, which luckily for me has happened with my deal O Sauvage. So it's, it's very potluck. You can, it, yeah, depending how it's stored, I find if you see a splash bottle that's kind of only that much left, there's a good chance it's probably turned because a lot of air yeah. can get in with a splash more so. That it's a very inexact science. So there's, basically, there's, yeah. yeah, there's two fragrances that I can say that even if you keep them on in room temperature, just away from direct sunlight and direct heat, but if you just keep them. Um, these two fragrances, according because I had worn the vintage ones, whatever I have vintage ones of them, and they they really develop even to get better fragrances. One of them is from the seventies, is Lagerfeld Cologne. I mean that fragrance is yes. just becoming better. It's just uh, even the, the the modern releases like from four or five years ago. Just let them be for a while. Same thing with Aramis Havana, strangely from ninety four. Uh, that is. Also, fragrance. Just let it be for like five, six, seven, eight years, and it just becomes better. And so, yeah. shelf life? Um, question mark. Yeah, it, it can go from really they don't age well if you're unlucky to they smell exactly how you imagine they probably should have done, even 30, 40 years old. And then some seem like they've changed, but it might be in a good way. So it's it's potluck. I've, I, I'd say a good twenty five percent of if I buy. 
a vintage one on eBay has kind of gone off in a bad way. So it is risky. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, just let's catch up on a few movie suggestions. Alex, the perfume temple all the way from Trieste in Italy. Thank you. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, 1975, Jack Jack Nicholson, uh, incarcerated in a mental asylum. Uh, But, uh, you know, kind of bleak, but darkly (laughs) comic in some ways. Very interesting film. Uh, Alien. 1979 yeah. says Yoshi. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, if you think Star Wars was the ultimate sci-fi film of the 70s, you might be right. But Alien gives it a close run for its money, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, uh, Dennis Weaver. The, thank you to Manly Sense for pointing out that yeah. it was Dennis Weaver. Uh, was Dennis let's catch up, go for a little bit further. And uh, there's a couple of suggestions. I smell, of course, yes, Star Wars. Close Encounter, the third kind. Deliverance. On that one. Deliverance. Deliverance. Um, yes, with the famous uh, John banjo. Voight, uh, Burt Reynolds, and so on. So. Yeah, Burt Reynolds, John Voight, and is that the one with the famous banjo jewel? The, it, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, wow, there are some great films. Uh, the Wicker Man. Yes, I love the Wicker Man. Very good. Oh God, I forgot Edward Woodward, isn't it? Edward yeah. Woodward, the 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 man. So good, they named him. Thrice, Edward Woodward, <laughs> uh, and uh, and soon the darkness. Yeah, uh, don't know that one actually, but certainly Wicky Man, Wicker Man is hella scary and and upsetting. Exorcist. And Gung Fu, thank you, Gung Fu, for the twenty Norwegian crowns. Great replies from both you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the super chat. Do hit us with a, a chat of that type if you want a specific question, Archer. And that was very good because it was a very pertinent question. Okay. Um, Mo Chowdhury says his Eau Sauvage from the 60s haven't been opened, but it's got a red hue now. Yeah, that can happen with the colour. That's never a good sign. 70s bottle has a tint and 80s have a, has a tint. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you never know sometimes with these things. So, okay. Let's just do music and culture. We, we don't want to be here for five hours, so I'll keep this reasonably brief, brief, but let's do music of the 70s. Any any highlights for you, Chris? Um, well, obviously, uh, um, rock music started to become real interested, uh, yeah. interesting with, with Black Sabbath, Deep Purple. Yeah. Um, uh, again, Genesis did some great progressive rock music, um, still with Peter Gabriel. Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned Elvis going to Las Vegas, for example, to to borrow a lighter uh, topic there. And uh, so it, it got punk was coming in, you know, uh, Sex Pistols, Billy Idol. Uh, so it, it got it got much rougher, much more uh, sexualized. Drugs were all over the place. Um, and and it's it's good to read some some autobiographies from from people who managed to survive that decade because lots of People perish, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Jim Morrison. Um, what's the, uh, um, the 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 the, the, fam- the famous female singer that that is seventy one, Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin. Um, yep. Yes. So so Elvis died as well. So so it, you know it took its toll, and and lots of lots of great musicians, artists, uh, just just you know, vanished and um, there was tough, very tough parties going on. Uh, uh, Andy Warhol and and uh, even in Paris, Yves Saint Laurent and Karl Lagerfeld were throwing one party after the other, uh, which was extremely wild. And so it was a wild, yeah. um, drug and fueled uh, time. It was, yes. Some of the excesses of the 60s continued, but some of the sort of hippie idealism dissipated a little bit and it maybe got a little bit kind of darker and out of i think bowie had a hard time with drugs oh and david stuff, bowie i forgot about david bowie yeah, like how can well, you forget about bowie <laughs> actually i mean it's a pretty damn good decade isn't it really yeah i mean yeah, yeah you got david bowie obviously in britain that the punk thing exploded at the towards the end of the decade which yeah. was a kind of anti-culture against Right. Some of the it was sort of the the um the response to the pretentiousness of prog rock or big yeah. arena bands like Led Zeppelin or something. Yeah, was yeah, kind yeah, of a, exactly. Yeah, uh, but it was still kind of interesting. I, I I am and was a big Led Zeppelin fan, so they were sort of touring the world in their their own aeroplane, and that I I you know there was a great video. The song remains the same movie where they're live at Madison Square Garden big influence on me you had wow. the glam rock scene in the uk with like gary glitter and the people with the ridiculous boots 
It's yeah, kind of yeah. a bit crap in retrospect, but uh, <laughs> it was very, it was kind of popular. Uh, a lot of people saying Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, of course, yes, Black Sabbath, who, yes, yeah, yeah, like well, the disco who. as well. This guy, I don't like disco, but disco, Michael Jackson, Jackson Five. Well, we shouldn't overlook that because that was huge. Yeah, disco came in, and as you say, yeah, Jackson Five. Um, yeah, a lot of these the the, the big Incredible. artists of, of the disco thing, and you had the the what's the John Tra- uh, staying alive with John Travolta. Yeah, the Bee Gees, our friend would tell uh, tell tales about that. Uh, Barry, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, he was on the show last week. It was his lookalike? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, just an amazing decade. So fun stuff. The seventies have been devastated by disco. Boney M, Chic, yes, even Kiss had to try and do a disco album by the end of the 70s because they were so they had to keep up. Uh, but Kiss was another huge band that were enormous uh, throughout the world. There was Kisteria. It was like the, the second coming of the Beatles. Oh, wow. uh, or maybe slightly less amazing music, some would Bruce say. Bruce Springsteen yeah. came on, this, on the uh, scene. Like Bruce Springsteen had some incredible albums. Bob Dylan is being mentioned. So, yeah, like, wow, really. Yes, uh, big times, big times, big times for the fragrances and big times for the music and the culture. What last thing, just briefly, then, sort of um, world events and the political landscape. What, obviously, the Cold War still raged. Yeah, oil crisis. Uh, was, it, the oil crisis of the mid seventies really right. changed a lot of things and caused Vietnam a lot of- was over by seventy four. Watergate uh, in the US, obviously. Uh, the Watergate scandal, which caused Nixon to have to quit in the mid seventies yeah, yeah. in America. Uh, so America was sort of really having a little bit of a, a, a crisis of self confidence after yeah, if, yeah. you know the, the the setback in Vietnam and what yeah. with the, the the president being uh, impeached. Not great for them. And yeah. yeah, the Arab-Israeli war, was it 1973? Yeah. I mean, there's still lots of conflicts going on. Um, the Cold War went through a little bit of a period of detente where things sort of lightened up a little bit. Um, you know, uh, Nixon went to visit Mao Zedong in China, didn't he, and stuff. So things, yeah, yeah, there was a yeah. little bit of detente, but we, we, we detente, they called it, yeah. but um, yeah. still Henry a lot of Henry Kissinger appeared as, as foreign minister of the, of the United States and... Uh, um, yes, I remember in '79 the the, the Irani Ayatollah Khomeini took over, which which totally gave the country a new uh, direction. And, and yes, you can still feel influences of that uh, appearing here and there in history afterwards. So that um, was pretty huge. Yeah, the, it used to be run by the Shah of Iran, who was yeah. uh, friends with the Americans, believe it or not. So America and Iran were big friends. <laughs> uh, but then they had an, an, an it's so called Islamic Res- Revolution, which is you know still what what holds sway there today right, and yeah. um so yeah that what that was pretty huge yeah uh, and, and, and pollution uh pollution of of in general of the environment was was very uh getting very much in people's attention because there was all these oil tankers ending up and spilling their their oil in, into the sea and and air pollution it started to really get bad i think that that's when it started when people started to to realize that there's something wrong yeah, absolutely. Bobby Fischer versus Spassky chess was huge. Yeah, there were a couple of uh, big chess matches between uh, Russians and uh, Bobby Fischer, the, the great hope of America. Yeah, that was a big thing. Craftwork came. Yep, good one. And uh, just on a slightly sports. less... Uh, yeah, yeah, we haven't done sports, really. Uh, the, the greatest football team of the international teams could arguably be the team that never won the World Cup, the Dutch the team Dutch, of yeah. Johan Cruyff. Yeah. And Co. The total football team of the 1974 World Cup, which lost to West Germany 2-1 in the final. Uh, but you had only been two for that one, Chris. So we're not quite old <laughs> I enough. I don't to remember, remember that one. Um, yeah, and Ajax, Cruyff's Ajax team were a great feature of the 70s. Uh, the Brazil team sort of yeah started off 1970. Amazing Brazil team won the World Cup. Any any other sporting highlights for you from the 70s? Um, the rumble in the jungle. Uh, oh, George yeah. Foreman against uh, the great late uh, Muhammad Ali. I think it yes. was in 74. Um, and it was in some outrageous place somewhere uh, totally off the map. Uh, but they put it in the jungle. It, I think it, it was somewhere in Africa probably. Zaire, After, I think, was it? Uh, let, let me, uh, it was, was it in, uh, Zaire? in Zaire, yeah. in Kinshasa. It's incredible. 
um, but one of the great boxing matches of of uh, of the of history. And Muhammad Ali was around very much. Obviously, Foreman and and many uh, of of the great boxers at the time. Um, very very popular sport. Uh, obviously, yeah. Tennis. John McEnroe was coming to the to the scene in Wimbledon like an eighteen year old and got into the uh, semi finals, if I remember well. Um, so uh, that was that was something. The Barrett was coming on the scene and. Uh, yeah, yeah, Borg. Yeah. I mean, Bjorn, Bjorn John, Borg. John Borg. In yes, he was the, the the top tennis star of that decade. Yeah, and he was men, a, he was game. he was the real first uh, pop icon of of tennis. Really, like everybody, like adored yeah. him, especially the the female uh, onlookers. And and yes. he was very very uh, prominent. And I mean, seventies without Bjorn Borg, uh, unimaginable. Yeah. I guess we better speaking of Swedish people, which of whom he was one. We better mention ABBA was pretty big as a musical. Chiquitita, act. tell me the truth. I think they were they were kind of never cool back then, but now they've got a they've got this kind of uh, almost a better reputation now. But I, I'm yeah. pretty sure back then they were seen as a little bit not exactly that cool. I don't know. Would that be right? Uh, it's. I just thought about it actually recently about ABBA and the 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 melodies that these people have brought to life are incredible. The the songwriting, what they what these guys like it or not, yeah, it's 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 absolutely incredible. So that's why I think the, the this huge success. I mean, just listen to actually what they have written. Yeah, they are clever songs, aren't they? They're, they're, you know, these people knew music. You know, they'd studied how to write a, a song and they weren't, they were simple and catchy, but if you actually analyze them, they're yeah. pretty clever too. I Same think. Same thing with yeah. Elton John. I mean, Elton John, Bernie yeah. Taupin uh, have done like uh, your song and, and stuff like that. Oh my God. Uh, what a, what a, I used to sometimes sing that song. Uh, it's a little bit funny. It's just, <laughs> that was good. Yeah, yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah, the the guy who wrote wrote the lyrics, as you say, was it Bernie Taupin? Never gets yeah, the, the credit Taupin, he yeah. deserves. Yeah, he wrote all the lyrics, and uh, Elton John did the melodies. Uh, but yeah, amazing. Uh, quick one there, and then we better move on quickly. Uh, Gary Fairhead, thank you. I loved the nineteen seventy eight World Cup held in Argentina, which of course they won, beating Holland three one in the final. Three, I think you meant the colours. Three colours and atmosphere just seemed amazing. Yeah, the famous kind of ticker tape parades. And, um, of course, Argentina in the grip of a mil military junta that ruled at the time and very much used that World Cup to sort of uh, make them more popular. Uh, and poor old Maradona was kept out of the tournament as being too young, although he probably could have uh, been great. But, hey, they won it anyway, so fair enough. But uh, he was apparently heartbroken. He, he was heartbroken to be kept out of the squad. But by 82... Right. He got his chance, but it wasn't until 8061. Okay, um, we'll better move on. Knotts, oh, yeah, fair point, Gary. Knotts Forest winning the European Cup. Amazing achievement. Yes, Brian Clough took them from non entities in the second division to champions of England and Europe, amazingly. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't happen now. It's all about money now. Okay, we better get into the 80s. 1980s, Chris. Fragrance, please. 1990s. I don't have any because there was no, no, no fragrance around. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again, I went uh, to keep it again colorful and uh, unexpected. I went for a fragrance that I haven't reviewed ever in my past uh, eight years yet, but I oh. totally adore. And as a fragrance from the French house called Roger Gallet uh. from the year of 1985, and it's called Open. Okay. And this is a wonderful, aromatic, fresh, tobacco, herbal fragrance. Okay, very much child of its time, 85. Yep. Couldn't pick a better year, probably in the 80s, as we have, we've done probably a week or two weeks ago. And Amazing, I didn't, yep. didn't feature that one for, for a weird reason. Um, but that just shows you that what, what sort of choice there was. Uh, so open... Yep. Uh, Roger Gallet is a very traditional French uh, perfume house, okay, and yeah. um, and this not is not the most a... uh, glamorous or talked about house, no. right? No, 
but this is just uh, and I you you know what I was thinking why it's called open and it has this 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 shape and this ball and the, the colors of it. I just realized I, I uh, made a search and it seems that Roger and Gallet in the mid eighties have sponsored tennis tournaments, uh, outdoors tennis tournaments where even unseated people could uh, you know qualify to. Um, participate which means an open okay that that's uh, how tennis, tennis tournament becomes open and it's played on clay it was played on clay and the whole theme if you look at this it's not so good because my uh light is not not optimal but it has this clayish type, type of appearance so uh, i think yeah, yeah. open refers to at the time when roger Gallet was involved in tennis yes. uh, played on clay so but the, many people say it's similar to um, Aramis Havana, you know, the the, the typical um, sort of aromatic um, tobacco. Though here you have a very nice Amalfi lemon and uh, and bergamot and lavender start. So it's a bit um, probably a bit fresher uh, than than Havana is and less sweet. Uh, wonderful eighties stuff that's still around. And for me, one of the best representatives of the decade of, of what it was all about and how people smelled uh, and what the performance was and price versus quality. And I could go on. Yeah, I need to get that one. Keep, people keep saying you need to get this one, Mr. Smelly, and uh, maybe it's time I put it in the old shopping basket. So thanks for, for reminding me. Yeah, and, and, you know, what you always bring is uh, some less obvious choices. So we appreciate that. Double question mark is back with 50 Mexican pesos. Thank you for the super chat. 80s Azaro actor. I think you're a fan of that one, aren't you, Chris? Great rose, great rose in uh, fragrance. 1989, I think, was the year. Uh, exceedingly actor, hard to uh, get. Exceedingly hard to get, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Wonderful rose fragrance. One of the best rose fragrances. Uh, Azaro actor. Uh, very yes. brave blend. Yeah. Uh, remarkable fragrance from what I hear. Jonathan, uh, just concurring there that that is indeed a great fragrance in his opinion. Jonathan. 1970 says thank you mr got plenty thank you for the one dollar 99 super chat depeche mode was a sweet band indeed a, a quintessential electro type band of the 80s who at the time you know some of us people like me i was too young at the time but you know old old curmudgeons like me would probably be saying i don't like this newfangled electronic music it's you know people should be playing the guitar and singing but now we all look back on a lot of, a lot of those bands as, as really classic and and yeah. great stuff so uh, yeah very good point depeche mode i think do deserve a lot of respect got to be honest uh and a great yeah great selection on the fragrance again yeah like you say chris we could and perhaps will and indeed have <laughs> in the past done a video on the 80s together haven't we not a live one before we did this but we you know it's, it's been quite a popular video so i mean i'll I'll let alex the perfume temple go with a little list here because we've, we've left out most of these antaeus yeah. yes koros well okay coming to that one jules yep dior dracar noir amazing by uh Guy La Roche. And uh, Zar from Van Cleef and Arpels, YSL Jazz, you name it. So impossible yeah. to select one. I'll go for my choice then. And I, again, you know, I, I am going to be obvious. But I think the Titan, the Titan of masculine releases, and I like that it came out in 81 because it means people were wearing this, you know, through the 80s. If you right. went into a pub in 85 or 87, you'd smell this on somebody pr quite pr possibly. Maybe not, but quite likely. Chorus, Yves Saint Laurent. Okay, an incredible release. A koros, I find, apparently, is a term for these Greek statue type things or gods. The, the, these these Greek idols or gods that one sees. Uh, I believe yeah. that's that's the thing. It wasn't a particular god, but I think it's a general term. I, I think I'm right in saying that. Anyhow, uh, and the, the bottle very much has that theme of being like a Greek marble statue type thing. It was a, the, the fragrance was inspired by uh, Yves Saint Laurent's trip to Greece, so hence that's the connection. Uh, Is that right? It's okay. To that. Okay, brilliant. And you can really, I mean, yeah, it, it's just got that thing that reminds you of the Greek ruins or a, a person or whatever. Anyway, fantastic. Love the kind of the way the bottle feels. I've got a re real old vintage one here. I've got a couple of different eras. So lucky to have the so-called Paris first version. Incredibly wow. potent. It's actually, I think it's classed as an aromatic fougere, but it, it's kind of beyond the, the traditional way one would look at that fragrance it's, it's not just a barbershop type smell uh it, it has a lot of animalic undertones it, it people talk about urinal and pissy and it kind of i think that's 
people have gone too much over to talking about that, but it, it does have a, 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 an animalic undertone to it, yes. Uh, I think Luca Turin described it as clean and dirty at the same time or smelling of uh, other people's used bed sheets after sex. And I kind of get that. I, th- I think there is a specific accord or something called animalis, apparently, that was being thrown in there, which gives this kind of uh, funky, sexy undertone. But it also has a, a note listing as long as your arm. Uh, all the kind of fresh stuff is in there, the bergamot note. Tons, I mean, I can't even list them. All, but there are loads of floral tones. There's a little bit of a honey thing in there, this sweet thing that again was in Givenchy Gentleman, uh, and it's got that similarly rugged masculine thing. Uh, it is very sophisticated French perfumery from, of course, Pierre Bourdon, a master in the world of perfume. And I, th- I think to sort of just say that it's, uh, it's, it's rugged, it's dirty, it's a powerhouse, doesn't do it justice as a fine no, piece of, no. of classic perfumery. Chris, your thoughts on Koros? Well, uh, obviously, uh, it was... It was um... Very brave uh, move from uh, from Yves Saint Laurent, and and I remember uh, reading about a, a very lush um, party for this one in in February 1981 when it was introduced in Paris. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the venue, but it could have been the Maxime, and I I, I know that Rudolf Nureyev, the the uh, Russian. Um, or Soviet uh, ballet dancer danced at the party and everybody was there and uh, you know it was a huge party uh, hundreds of, of people and celebrities and and uh, it was a big big launch party for Quoros um, that was you know famous it cost like I don't know at the time like two hundred thousand dollars or something just just for the party so um, yeah that just shows you what what sort of different launches or the different approach to a fragrance launch <laughs> was at the time and, and now. Yeah, absolutely. MAJ puts it in the top five of all time for him. So, yeah, a titan of the decade, undoubtedly. Let, let's move swiftly on. I won't dwell on too many other fragrances because we could be here all night. Exactly. Uh, Tumfath mentions Davidoff Zeno, which is also good. And at the end of the decade, uh, Fahrenheit, which, yeah. which ushered in a new era yeah. of things being more varied and different uh so yeah very much a a fragrance that took us into the the future that one fahrenheit so but yeah as i say i won't dwell let's talk about cultural things quickly then um movies of the 80s off the top of your head again there's so many but what what springs to mind as a classic of the 80s for you yeah this way this will uh um again not an obvious choice uh, but uh, there was a there was a movie by Werner Herzog with Klaus Kinski, um, and I the, I forget I forget the title of the movie, but um, it was it, it was about uh, a guy who is opening an opera in the middle of the uh, uh, Peruvian jungle. Um, I'll look it up. I'll, yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, keep going. Yeah, I'll look. Yeah, the name so, up. so that that was that was an absolutely stunning movie. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, uh, the acting and and the, the directing of of that movie, Fitzcarraldo. 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 Uh, yes. Fitzcarraldo. Uh, wow. But Dave all these bonkers. Yeah, like uh, all the all these great movies came out. Like you know, these very adventurous movies. Like uh, you had uh, everybody seems to be in the jungle at the time. Like Rambo was in the jungle, Schwarzenegger was in the jungle, uh, Full Metal Jacket, uh, Platoon. Uh, you know, yeah. like, you have all these movies. Everybody was fighting in the jungle for some reason, and, uh, and all these adventure movies. Indiana Jones and and everybody did a take. Uh, Michael Douglas had this take with Kathleen. I don't Kathleen Turner maybe. Uh, in, oh yeah. In, um... yeah. Some romance. That's it. Um, That's it. The romancing the stone. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah that was pretty. You know, the eighties were yeah. about this um, weird. Uh, everybody's in the jungle and and having an adventure type of uh, scenario. That's true. Why were Including they in the eighties? Yeah. Even Predator. Everything was in the jungle. Yeah. You're right. Uh, but Fritz yeah. Caraldo is a kind of high level artistic movie. That's Fascinating right. Fascinating yeah. guy, Werner Herzog, and the the actor Klaus Kinski is an absolute enigma isn't he i mean he was uh, yeah an absolute madman i mean verging on actually appearing to be mad there's i don't know if you've ever seen this documentary about the making of that film and he goes of course one yeah, of them, i'm a huge he, i'm a huge kinski fan so i've i've seen everything there is about kinski i've seen it and uh, i and i have the fragrance named after him as well so. 
Wow. Yeah, yeah, you've mentioned that. He got, he, he's, he's moving some ship through the jungle in order to... I yeah. don't know what it's... I can't remember, but it's and an amazing film. they moved that ship. That's not, that's not uh, some trick or some, uh, you yeah. know, uh, strange uh, sort of, uh, you know, Hollywood type of uh, scenario. That They really moved the ship through that uh, hill in, yeah. the, in the middle of the jungle. And, uh, and Kinski was so self-centered because yes. you can see they, they caught a lot of trees out uh, with, with all the people that worked on the set and one of the one of the people that working there got bit by a very very um venomous snake and they had to cut his i think his leg off or his arm one of that and that was the story of the day everybody talked about it and kinski was so upset that they didn't talk about him that he yeah. threw a huge tantrum that his coffee is cold that's it yeah just to it, gain the attention yeah. back to him you know so uh, he was to say he was difficult to work with would be the <laughs> understatement of the millennium. He was an absolute psychopath. Uh, you know, he was an absolute nutter, but very entertaining. I've seen some of his videos of him ranting and stuff. Yeah. But there, there's some video where he sort of claims to be the new Jesus or something, isn't there? On That's, stage, have you seen? He had that? he had this on stage appearances in the 70s about Jesus. Yes, and he filled arenas, and uh, yeah, it, it was very very intense. Yes. But interesting man yeah look him up guys it's not all about english language actors there are some amazing european language directors and actors i'm going to do the super chat very generous super chat from donna zone the donna zone kebab shop potter's bar four pounds 49 thank you for the super chat we miss you dan your late night eating kept our business afloat at our <laughs> darkest hour you used to enjoy a lamb donna on tuesdays come back I tell you, I'm not. I, I I do enjoy a lamb donna, but it's not something I would often opt for. I I prefer a chicken sheesh. So you've obviously you've blown your cover there, because if you knew me, you'd know that. But thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Got to go with this um, comment. Andre Potre, Petre, full metal jacket by yeah. Stanley Kubrick for the win. Yeah, the, and all of these Vietnam films uh, that the um oh god, what's the um platoon. Okay, yeah. Apocalypse Now was 79, but, you know, going into the 80s. It was America sort of coming to terms with the Vietnam thing, and they had this real, you know, it was a massive thing in the American psyche, and some of those mov movies are really great. Even the TV series, you know, Magnum was a Vietnam yeah. veteran, wasn't he, Tom Selleck? 18. At the A-team were, yeah, they, ex they escaped from a high security thing, didn't they? Yeah, they, they were Vietnam veterans. So, yeah, it was it was absolutely prevalent. Of course, Rambo was a, a Vietnam vet too, wasn't he? So it was all over the place and it made for some absolutely compelling viewing. But, uh, yeah, we, we will just touch on a couple of movies. That's probably Don't enough. Don't forget about Dallas. You know, Dallas, you have to mention Dallas. Uh, if you Dallas, the, the the t yeah, the series Dallas was the uh, obviously oil tycoon families in, in Dallas. Uh, the, the, that was the year of the big shoulder pads oh, and yeah. all that. Um, yep, yeah. <laughs> Dallas and, and Dynasty 2 was pretty good, right? Uh, although, clan. sorry, the Denver clan, uh, yeah. Denver. Cheers was a great series yeah. in the 80s. That was pretty, uh, that's one I can get behind, quite like Cheers. Uh, Taxi, early 80s, you remember the, the, the TV series where Danny DeVito came to yeah. prominence? That was, yeah, that was yeah. quite good. Uh, well, at least you Monty and me were both. Mindy. Mork and Mindy, yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was intriguing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Back to the Future, someone says, of course, yeah, Titanic film of the decade. Uh, we could be here all night on the movies. But yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> we got to be careful because I, I can get bogged down. Uh, gentlemen, your thoughts, please. Let's do this super chat. Thank you so much to Mr. Got Plenty for a $4.99 super chat. Okay, let's do this quickly. Gentlemen, your thoughts, please. Yves Saint Laurent stroke Lagerfeld Penzo. Versace, who was the most influential artist of the 80s, 90s? I'll let, I, I, I'll let Chris answer this one. I would definitely pick Karl Lagerfeld. And the reason is that he transformed uh, Chanel from a dead brand to almost dead brand after, after you know, running out of ideas and obviously Coco Chanel not being around for long and getting very stuffy. He turned that... Turned that uh, the, the the brand and the the the, the whole image of, of Chanel totally around and made it a billion dollar uh, enterprise again and and while running his own brand as well as Chloe as well as Fendi um, so Karl Lagerfeld was definitely um, the man of uh, of the time and Gianni Versace always said that his absolute idol uh, is is Karl Lagerfeld so um, that already tells you something. 
Hey, great, great straight answer. I, I don't have enough knowledge of fashion in general to get, to give a comment, so I'm going to defer to Chris on that one. But great super chat. Thank you so much, Mr. Got Plenty. Um, Dr. Yuval, someone said Aliens, the sequel, was was also kind of different type of film, more of an action film, but very good sequel. Or I think you meant that one, and someone else did say Aliens. Top Gun also was good. Uh, absolutely. Blade Runner, yep, that was good too. Uh, Terminator, yep, big stuff. And Dirty Dancing, didn't do it for me, but yeah, it was. It no, no, stuff. no. There was these dancing films, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the... You know, the um... Dirty Dancing. There was others. There's fl uh, fl uh, not Flash. What was the name of? Uh, or was it Flash? There was this. this, this, this oh, Flash! Um, flash Dance or something. Flash Dance. Yeah, yeah, flash dance yeah. And all that. Yeah, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That was quite good. That was all right. I didn't mind that. Pretty in Pink was quite a good movie too. Thought that was quite good. Uh, the Shining was that the eighties? Could be. Or was it seven? Eighty one. I think Shining. Oh, was it? Okay, Miami Vice. Okay, a TV series that defined the decade, along with uh, Dallas Dynasty. Miami Vice has to be in there, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Don Johnson and and uh, and the stuff. Yeah, and the, the Phil Collins tune to it, and uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the sort of the 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 jackets with the sleeves a bit yeah. too short or pulled up. That whole look and the pa pastel coloured jackets and stuff. Yeah. I kind of like the 80s. There was some nice, uh, nice fashions. And uh, Al Manzano is in the chat. Great to have you here. Wow, I just put a pair of Karl Lagerfeld shoes. Fame, yes, great early TV, early 80s TV series. Fame was excellent. Magnum PI is kind of good in a cheesy way. Kind of like Magnum PI. Um, Night Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters was good. Night Rider was a good. Uh, yeah, that was good. The Hoff. The, the emergence of David Hasselhoff, yes, before well, Baywatch also started in the very late eighties. So he, he, yeah, but he started off with uh, with the incredible Knight Rider, which I used to enjoy as a kid. The Fame movie was influent, infinitely better than the terrible TV series. Yeah, I used to watch the TV series as a kid, thinking it was quite good, but I was about six, so I probably didn't have too much Top great Gun. taste. Top Gun was good. A Team, A Team was a great. I can remember when A Team came to British TV. And we were very excited about this. It was hyped up for a couple of weeks before. It was that the trailers wow. were there, and uh, it kind of didn't disappoint. That was pretty good. Okay, I think we better move on. We better move on. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, mu look, we've done so much music of the eighties. I think we'll, we'll just, if you just very very quickly, then one band. If you had to pick one great eighties band, Chris. Uh, in the eighties, for me, um, what I was listening to and what influenced me uh, um, was Genesis. All right. Uh, and they went in a little bit more of a commercial direction yeah. as the 80s yeah. went on, but still always interesting and always good, I think. Yeah. Fair point. OK, I will vote for Iron Maiden, a bit of a metaler. I, I did like Iron Maiden. They were good. And that was a whole culture. You know, you had the people would be called metalers. There was a certain type of person in, in Britain who was a metaler who would wear an Iron Maiden T-shirt and have long hair and wear, you know, scruffy ripped jeans and it was it was a, a, a type of person along with goths they kind of became a thing goths do you have them in in hungary chris yeah of course yeah, Gothic, yeah, yeah, yeah. all, all yeah. these types of people emerged it was fun yeah. uh and, okay enough 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 on to the 90s chris scent of the 90s please uh, yeah, we've talked about too much of the 80s. So we left politics and sport out, but oh, we've we've done we've, we've done that. We could be sitting here for ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's let's skip on. Okay, 90s. Okay, 90s is again. I was trying to look at the fragrance that is not uh, your obvious uh, choice. Maybe, although again, it's still around, still being made, still the same as it was, except for the bloody sprayer that they have put in this one. But I'm going to come to that. Um, and it's it's a smell and a blend that is very um, has a great great character and it really very much embodies what the 90s were all about for yeah. me. Apart from Tommy, uh, you know Tommy Hilfiger, the original cologne, because that is that is really something very 90s smelling. But this yeah. little juice here, um, Versace blue jeans. Versace oh. blue jeans, and I bought this uh, partly because you've raved about it. And I have to weirdly admit, Jeremy Fragrance also influenced me to finally pick up a bottle. So I totally agree. I'll just very quickly answer this question. Manny says, "Are you a fan of the new wave of British heavy metal?" Yes, is the answer. I do like that. 
And just one quick super chat suggestion. Sorry, Chris. Double question mark again with 50 Mexican pesos. Thank you for a good suggestion. Off the wall, but I like it. 90s Trusadi Lomo. Uh, yeah. yeah, great, great suggestion. Sorry, Chris. Diesel, yeah. Diesel blue jeans. It is Versace. good, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Diesel, what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking jeans, jeans. Versace blue jeans. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Chris. Back to you. Yeah. Um, it, it has this fresh... Um, modern take on lavender as well it has a fruitiness about it it has a muskiness about it it's just it's just a smell that you cannot not like um but it's very 90s so if you don't like 90s you don't like this one um and the bottle design done by the great late genius Gianni Versace oh was it oh okay yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. his his creation um and it was a huge marketing at the time and again it's still around uh, still performing well, still smelling tremendously nice. The only thing that they messed up is the sprayer because the sprayer to, is, is is one of the shittiest sprayers today. It, it's just... It, uh, yeah. And it wasn't like this at the time when Johnny was still around, so I don't know what they've thought, but the fragrance is, is just it's so 90s, and the blue and the yellow colors and everything is colorful, everything is happy. That's what the 90s were all about, to me at least, or, you know, mostly mm. commercially as well, like everybody was... You know, it was seemed to be a good time and uh, you know colorful things friends and 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 you had the president of the united states playing the saxophone and was it was a you know and and then his saxophone got played as well so it was uh it was a weird weird uh, colorful time yeah yeah uh, a great phrase i mean how come we can get that so cheap i mean it's it doesn't smell worse than things that still sell a little bit higher price it, it's really good it lasts ages on my skin as well in yeah. the modern formula yeah. i really I, I find it very very charming i i yeah. think i was kind of snob I, I was a bit of a snob i was put off it just because it's such a cheapie in that no. tin which is actually kind of a fun design, the tin, but it, it makes me think that it's cheap. But yeah, guys, if you haven't got this one and you think you've got this itch to buy something this week and you don't want to waste a ton of money, that could be a good way to scratch your blind buy itch. Or if you, you probably smelled it in the shops, but it's really good. I'm going to go for my selection, though. Great, great choice, Chris. I mean, we could, again, we could be sat here all night, couldn't we, about Frank? You, you've done videos on individual years from the 90s. I think we did a video on the 90s together, so we, we're abbreviating. Al Manzano, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, again, I've, I'm being very obvious in my picks because a lot of people would predict this. I think this is the only one of mine that you can't still buy. Actually, well, no, you can still buy it, but most people think you need to get vintage with this one. Dolce & Gabbana pour on the first masculine release from Mr. Dolce and Mr. Gabbana. Uh, and this was, of course, 1994. A bit more of a newer fragrance uh, or fashion house. I think they only did their first show in 85. It took them nine years to release a fragrance for men, simply called Dolce and Gabbana Pour Homme, back when, you know, they just called it the name of the fragrance, the, the, the fashion house, because that was their first thing. Eau de Toilette, really lovely combination of citrus, woods, herbs, with a little twist, a little twist of a tobacco accord, giving it just something unique and different. One of, if not the ultimate, springtime good-feeling fragrance. Or for me, uh, just sort of... I think I, I had a friend in when I used to work in the guitar shop doing guitar lessons, and one of the other guys there said it just made him think of like being on holiday in Italy, or he, he was from Cyprus, so he used to go back there every summer. And it was like the ultimate thing to spray on when you'd been out in the sun all day and you're going out in the evening, and you feel good, and you're just wearing a, sh a shirt, and you're going out to relax and have a drink. It's that good kind of happy vibe. And again, very much a 90s kind of smell, but in a really, really good way. And if you can get the old bottle with the sticker, becoming more and more rare, and you may be unlucky, it could have gone off, but I've had four or five or six bottles, and only one was off, but yeah, that was disappointing. But you're yeah, very, very nice fragrance. Max Gavery, I believe, is the perfumer on that one. Wow. Are you a fan of this one, Chris? Yes, I like it a lot. Yes, yes. It's it's a very Italian, um, classy one. I didn't review it yet, but I probably will come to it. Yeah, I'm surprised. Do you, do you have it in the collection? I have it in the collection, uh, and I have... Um, a few ones that uh, one from the house of Nikki that um, are sort of almost copy of this, which uh, okay. it smells so good that uh, you know it's just I keep coming back to that one as well. Um, but the problem is with my bottle um, of this one, 
and this is why I didn't review it. It's, it's not too much in there, and I warned it a very long time ago, and I couldn't I couldn't really give a, a truly genuine review because the, the the amount in the bottle and the the, the quality of the of the amount mm. that has left in the bottle is not good enough for me to provide a review. So I got to get a new one, but I won't be able to get a vintage one. So I'm kind of stuck between two chairs here. Yeah. Well, there are vintage ones out there, but yeah, they're getting harder and harder to find. Yeah. Dep I think it depends where you are in the world. I think we're, we were a bit lucky in England. Like, they seem to crop up quite a bit, but it's, yeah. you know, this is four or five years ago. It's changing all the time. Uh, okay. The 90s and a fun decade, of course. Uh, the world changed a lot. We, we've covered this to some extent in other videos, but just uh, let's touch on a couple of main points. Uh, okay. Best movie. Of, what is the best movie of the 90s, Chris? Phew, you start first. <laughs> oh god that is a tough uh i was yeah, i was i was trying to buy time there um <laughs> i know i'll tell you what i do i really like dumb and dumber i find that very funny uh i know it's basic humor dumb and dumber cracks me up so i can still yeah there's a lot of great gags in dumb and dumber so i would go dumb and dumber jim carrey and the other mm. guy and just uh belly laughs all the way through which was a good thing pulp fiction was quite good i remember oh, watching yeah, that yeah, at yeah. the time that was actually that is a pretty good uh film is that is that tarantino Am of course I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah it is yeah. tarantino isn't it so yeah. obviously uh you got bruce willis you got uh john travolta uh who's the other guy i don't know uh, we got harvey Keitel famously yeah. cleaning up the back of the car uh it's a good it's a, it's a great movie. i solve really problems is. that's <laughs> he's he did a really uh cheesy ad for car insurance then in the uk as well or something based on that which uh, <laughs> kind of ruined it but yeah reservoir dogs of course to, uh, tarantino as well Saving oh, yeah. Private Ryan was that nineties? Yeah, I suppose it was. Yeah, yeah. Ninety six, I think it was. Yeah, I would Good, go with yeah. Goodfellas. Um, ah, nineteen ninety, I think that was. That was just uh, uh, Joe Pesci. Like, oh my god, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, or or I mentioned in one of the other videos um, the uh, movie called A uh, Few Good Men with um, Jack Nicholson, Demi Moore, yeah. and Tom Cruise. There, uh, great team, great movie. Uh, but Goodfellas, I would, I would, I would go with Goodfellas probably. Good call, actually. Yeah, right at the start of the decade, that actually is, is brilliant. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson, thank you, was the other main protagonist in uh, in Pulp Fiction, and yeah, of course, some just some great lines in that one. Yeah, he he was Casino. Oh yeah, uh, Casino. Yes, yeah. that was pretty darn good too. Okay, Pulp Fiction and Jurassic Park. Yeah, well, I, it's, Jurassic Park did nothing for me, but it was a huge movie. Uh, Dancing with Wolves again didn't tickle my fancy, but uh, maybe I was like uh, of American history. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's ama amazing stuff out there. Uh, oh, four weddings and a funeral was uh, quite interesting, and the, the emergence of Hugh Grant and that kind of, the, the sort of British films that did well. There were a few of those, and the four four weddings and a funeral was pretty good. The, the Big Lebowski too. Okay, very quickly then, because I think we've we've done a good session. I don't want to keep you up too late here, Chris. Oh, by the way, I take it you're not you're not boozing tonight. I don't see any red no, wine. It's it's water. Uh... Okay. You want to dehydrate uh, or uh, hydrate myself too. I, res I respect your healthiness tonight. Uh, I'm not drinking at this point in time either. I will be tomorrow though on the show. I'll try and entice you onto the show tomorrow if I can, Chris, uh, or maybe one of the nights this weekend. But you, you may be busy, but you're, you're always invited. You know that. Uh, okay. Uh, it's well, people always look forward to you coming on. Okay. Cultural stuff. Uh, just very quickly, favorite band or piece of music from the 90s? What do you reckon? I got I got into Metallica in the nineties, uh, okay. beginning of the nineties, in, into all sorts of uh, you know directions of heavy metal very much, uh, which was a total change for me uh, after after uh, you know more pop genesis and some Italian music. I got into Vasco Rossi uh, in the nineties as well, who is a famous Italian um, uh, musician, and so so that that really shaped uh, me big time. Um, and uh, and you know probably the the, the major uh, influence in terms of in terms of music in in the in the nineties was uh, for me you know getting heavier and getting up you know listening to things like Pantera and and still still do that today um, and so that that really gives me gives me the kick yeah. 
Fair enough. Okay, yeah, you do like your heavy stuff, which is great, and I do kind of too. Uh, I think Fernando Soto has a good point to say that they're, they're not my favourite band, but yeah, the, the grunge scene, as someone else mentions there, Doctor Evil was was the huge one of the huge trends that evolved. Uh, and Nirvana, of course, were the band, although, of course, tragically, Cobain was dead by 94, but that was huge. And you had other bands like um, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Pearl Jam, all these kind of so-called grunge bands, yeah. kind of yeah. killed off the popularity of the, the the hair metal scene of the late 80s, yeah. the White Snakes, and, uh, well, the Bon Jovis uh, survived, but only by adapting. Too Unlimited, on a less sophisticated note, yep, they were interesting. Dun, 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 dun. They were, they were kind of good. Uh, gangster rap, of course, emerged, and yeah. yep, that was that was a big B I G. Yeah, yeah. There's some uh, two pack and all that kind of stuff was was huge. I, I didn't know a lot about that stuff, but yeah, it was it was huge. Oasis. And then you had Britpop stuff like Oasis and Blur was was huge actually as well. Again, didn't float my boat, but what do I know? Yeah, it was an interesting time. Ch things change. I think we can wrap it up around about there, uh, Chris. Any any pass? Uh, uh, what do you reckon we should do next? We the first time we've stepped outside our format. Let, let us know, people. Did you enjoy that? I thought it was quite good that we we don't want to just only do one year every week. It's good to vary it. So that was a it was that was Chris's idea. Good call, Chris. Thanks. What do you reckon? Uh, any any no. other format ideas for the show, Chris? I would I would really uh, um, sort of uh, ask 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 um, you know people uh, onlookers viewers our subscribers to to um, throw ideas at us because this show is for you okay and of course for our own entertainment and nostalgic purposes um, but uh, yeah yeah just to keep it a little bit more versatile interesting um, I I don't want to think of of specific idea because it just comes to me like why don't we do this and then we discuss it and we do it uh, it could be another decade in specific or it could be uh the 1800s <laughs> yeah well there are some fragrances from then that we still got uh, by the way guys if you haven't subscribed to chris's channel there is a link there or if you just type scent land uh in your search bar on youtube please do go and head over there. Amazing reviews. Every time I look on your channel, there's a new fragrance I've never heard of. And I can't, you know, so many other channels, including probably my own, I look at it and I know it's going to be the same old suspects or a list. And I know that I'll know half of them. But with you, so many things that I've never heard of and often stuff I can buy for, you know, 20 pounds or something. So, you know, if you actually like to discover new fragrances, uh, I do think the Scentland yeah. channel is one of the most authentic you can possibly go to. So there's a link there, guys. Do go over and uh, give him a follow if you haven't already. You won't you won't regret it if you like the kind of stuff we talk about here on the channel. Oh, Lady Diana dying was a huge thing of the late 90s, too. That was a bit of an earthquake That's correct, around yeah. the world. And um, many conspiracy, conspiracy theories of what happened that night. Yeah. That Dodi Al fired. <laughs> yes, Dodi Al fired. Yep. Who benefited from that happening who might have had a motive or was it just a tragic accident we may never know perhaps we'll do mi6 thing. listening <laughs> oh man oh, god i hope not i better get there probably a good point point to end it yes okay guys <laughs> wherever you are in the world stay safe have a great week we'll be back next week check us out or at least myself out on the live shows friday saturday and have a great weekend coming up people chris thank you so much for joining me thank you for having me thank you to, to the people saying thank you and appreciating the stream taffy appreciate it ford uh prefect thank you and to all of you for your thanks the feeling is mutual see you in the next one bye bye take care